Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing it really well today. So today's sewing project is a little bit something different to what I usually post on my channel, but I'm really excited about sharing it because it was a lot of fun to create. So today I am making this matching lounge set or sweatsuit, whatever you want to call it. So it's a sweatshirt and joggers in the same fabric. And I had so much fun with this. I don't usually work with stretch fabrics, so it was a lot of fun to experiment with that a little bit. And I love the result of this project so much that it's something I definitely want to recreate in more colors. So here is what the sweatshirt looks like. This is the Megan Nielsen Jara sweater pattern. I chose this pattern because I liked that the shoulders were dropped. So I think it's a really great sweatshirt pattern. And then for the joggers, I chose the Seamwork Mel joggers. I liked these because they seemed really comfy, but also had some cool detailing like the pockets and the top stitching at the waistband. And then they also have cuffs just like the sweatshirt. So this was overall a really fun project to do. I used two different fabrics for this project. One was a French terry and then the other one is a matching ribbing. I got these from a shop called Thread Smitten, which I will link to down below because they have some beautiful combinations of French terry and ribbing in matching colors. And the color that I got is called Old Rose. Now before I jump into the sewing, I wanted to give you a couple of notes about how I am sewing my project today because it is with a stretch fabric. So I'll be using my serger throughout this video, but if you don't have a serger, don't worry. There are ways to sew on stretch without a serger. You can use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine to sew your seams, and I'll link to some articles about that down below. You'll just want to make sure that you have jersey ballpoint needles. These will keep you from tearing your fabric since the knit fiber is a little bit more delicate in the way it's constructed than a woven fiber. A regular needle would just put holes in the fabric, so you want a ballpoint jersey needle just like these and then for my project although I used my serger to sew the seams for any top stitching that I did I used twin needle stitching on my regular sewing machine you probably can't see this but I'll put a close-up in so a twin needle is just two needles in one basically so I ran two sets of thread through my sewing machine and this allowed me to top stitch on my stretch fabric without it stretching out or going out of shape or anything like that so that is a lot of introduction let's go ahead and jump into the project and let me show you how I made these so to get started with this project, I'm going to cut out all of my pattern pieces for it, both of the pieces. Now I had only purchased a yard and a half of my French terry fabric and I really did not expect to be able to get all of my pattern pieces out of that much yardage, but that was what was available. But it turned out it was actually plenty for my project. I was able to squeeze all of these pieces into that yardage, so I was very excited about that. This fabric is just quite wide. So I'm going ahead and cutting out all of the pieces that I need from the French terry for both the sweatshirt and the joggers. So the pieces that I cut out for the sweatshirt are the front, the back, and the sleeve pieces. And then for the joggers, it's the front, the back, the front and back waistband pieces, and the two pocket pieces. Now working with my ribbing, I have a half yard of this ribbing and you can see that it's woven in a tube. So the first thing I'm going to do is just split this open so that I can fit all of the pattern pieces on it that I need to. I'll be using my ribbing to make the neck band, the cuffs, and any little trim pieces like that on the pattern. So the first one I'm cutting out is the sweatshirt waistband and I'll cut two of this out. Next, I'll cut out the cuffs for both the sweatshirt and the joggers, as well as the neckband for the sweatshirt.
And with all of my pieces finally cut out, I'm ready to get started sewing. So I'm going to start with the sweatshirt today. And the first thing to do to assemble the sweatshirt is to sew the shoulder seams. So I'm pinning my shoulder seams together with the right sides together. And I'll sew this down with a quarter inch seam allowance on the serger. Now it's important to note that the Megan Nielsen pattern does call for a one quarter inch seam allowance, while the seam work pattern calls for a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So just a little bit of a difference between the two patterns. Patterns. One of the great things about sewing with knits is that you just have to sew the seam once since the serger both sews the seam and finishes the seam, so it saves a lot of time. So now I'm just going to trim any excess thread and then press these seams to the back. And with the shoulder seams done, I can now move on to the neckband. So the neckband is like what you would have on a t-shirt. It's this little bit of ribbing that lays really flat and looks really nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold it so that the right sides are together and sew along the short edge to join it into a loop. Next, I'm just going to press that seam to one side so that it lays really nice and flat. And then I will fold the neckband in half so that the long edges are together and press this down. So now I'm ready to attach the neckband to the shirt. And this particular pattern had notch markings that indicate the shoulder seam. So you can see I have a little notch cut in my neckband and I'm going to match that up with the shoulder seams on either side of the shirt. Then I'll match up the center back and the center front and that will keep everything really even as I stretch the neckband to fit into place as I sew it down. You can see there I scorched a little bit of my neckband with my iron but thankfully it actually came off. I just have it turned towards the inside here so thankfully it wasn't visible but that was a little bit annoying. So the neckband piece is actually a little bit smaller than the actual neck opening itself. So as I sew, I'll just be stretching the neckband to fit into place. And that's what allows it to lay really flat once it's done being sewn into place. And then just for a little bit of extra detail, I'm going to use my twin needle setting on my sewing machine and run a row of top stitching along the edge where the neckband is joined to the shirt. So the next step is to attach the sleeves to the shirt. So I'm going to start by placing my sleeve on the shirt with the right sides together and matching up both the edges and the center of the sleeve with the indications on the shirt. So there are notches and also the center seam. Then I'm just going to sew this down with my serger. And now we're ready to sew the side seams and this is where the shirt really starts to take shape into a shirt. So I'm going to fold the shirt together with the right sides together and match up the underarm seam and pin this down. Then I'll pin all the way from the edge of the sleeve to the bottom of the shirt and sew this entire seam down with my serger. The next step is to make the cuffs and these are actually made in the exact same way that we just made the neckband. So I'm going to place this with the right sides together and sew along the short edge.
Next, I'm going to fold this so that the raw edges are together and the seam is enclosed inside and then press this down. Now I'm ready to attach the cuff to the shirt. So I'm going to match up the side seams and then match up the center of the sleeve with the notch that is on the cuff. And then sew this down with my serger, stretching the cuff to fit to the sleeve, just like we did for the neckband. Also going to add some top stitching to the cuff because I think this just looks really nice. And then the last step to make the sweatshirt is to make the waistband. And this is again made in the same process that we used for the cuffs and for the neckband. The only difference here is that we'll be sewing two side seams since this is two pieces. So I've just matched up the waistband pieces with the right sides together and I'm sewing along the short edges. Next, I'm just going to press the seams towards the back and then fold the waistband so that the raw edges are together and the seams are concealed on the inside. Then I'll pin this to the shirt in the same process that I used for the cuffs. Next, I'm just going to sew this on using the serger, and then I will once again top stitch this with some twin needle stitching. So that's all there is to the sweatshirt and now I can move on to the joggers. So the first step to making the joggers is to attach the pocket pieces to the front jogger pieces. So I'm going to match the pocket pieces up with the right sides together to this curve where they fit in perfectly and there is a notch here to match up as well. And then I'll just sew this down on my serger now using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance because we've switched to the seam work pattern. And then after I've sewn both of those to the front pieces, I'm going to press these down and then top stitch around that curve using twin needle stitching. So here is how that looks once the top stitching is done. And now I can move on to adding the back of the pocket piece to form the pocket bag. So I'm going to pin this along the curved edge of the pocket and make sure that the right sides are together here. And then I'll sew around the curve using my serger. And then after the pocket is sewn in place, the top and side of the pocket will be a little bit unstable right now because those will be enclosed in the waistband and side seams later. So to keep those secure for now, I'm just going to pin these in place. The pattern said to base them and you could do that, but I just thought it would be easier to pin them. So that's what I did. And once the pockets are attached on both sides, I can go ahead and sew the two front pieces together at the rise seam. So I'm going to pin along the curve here and then I'll sew this down with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on the serger. I can also go ahead and do the same step for the back pieces, pinning these together with the right sides together along that curve. So now I have a front piece and a back piece and I can go ahead and sew these together along the side seams. So I've placed these together with the right sides together and I'm pinning all the way along each outer side and then I'm going to sew this down with the serger. I'm making sure to transfer the pins that I had used to attach the pocket to the side earlier to the outside just so that I don't accidentally run over any of those pins. And now those pockets will be encased in the side seams. I'm 
going to quickly press the side seams towards the back and then I can sew the inseam. So with the right sides together, once again, I'm going to match up the two rise seams in the center and then pin all the way along each of the pant legs. Then I'll sew all the way from the end of one pant leg to the end of the other to create the inseam. Once the inseam is sewn, the pants are pretty much constructed, so now I can move on to the waistband. Now this waistband called for buttonholes, but instead of using buttonholes today, I'm going to use an eyelet kit because I like the way this looks on a pair of joggers. I have some ready to wear ones that I really like that have eyelets. So I'm going to mark where the buttonholes go and then mark where I want my eyelet. Then I'll cut a little hole right here and then pop the eyelet through that hole. Then I'm going to follow the instructions on the eyelet kit to attach these. It's a little bit more of a heavy duty process because you do have to use a hammer, but I'm just going to follow the instructions and layer on the other two parts of the eyelet and then use my hammer to secure it in place. This does work better working over a solid surface I learned while I was trying to do this. It would not work if I was just using my ironing board. So I grabbed this little wooden block and used that and everything worked out well. So here is how the eyelids turned out. I think they look really nice and it just adds a little bit of extra detail that I think looks really professional. So now I can put the waistband together. So I'm going to pin it together along the side seams and go ahead and stitch these down. I'm going to fold the waistband in half so that the long edges are together and that seam is encased on the inside of the waistband and then just press this down along the top to create a crease. And now I can go ahead and attach the waistband to the joggers. So I am going to place the waistband with the right side against the right side of the joggers and pin this in place, matching together any notches that I marked from the pattern piece to make sure that everything is really even. Now, as I was sewing this down, I realized I needed to leave a gap for my elastic. So I'm making sure to leave about a two inch gap in the back of the jogger so that I can add the elastic in a minute and then we'll close that seam off later. So I cut a piece of two inch waistband elastic according to the elastic guide which came with the pattern and I'm going to use a safety pin to thread this through the waistband. And then to secure the elastic pieces together, I'm going to make sure they're not twisted and then sew them together using a zigzag stitch and a lot of back stitching. Now I'm just going to adjust the elastic in the waistband so that it fits nicely. And then I can go ahead and close up the waistband where we left that gap before by pinning this back together and sewing it down with my serger. Now this waistband has both elastic and an adjustable drawstring. So to create a channel for the drawstring, I'm going to add two rows of top stitching to the waistband. As I'm sewing, I'm stretching the elastic as I go to make sure that the fabric stays really flat and I'm sewing on either side of where the eyelids are. 
So now I can add my drawstring. I have this webbing that I bought from Threadsmitten along with the fabric, and I'm just going to thread it through using a safety pin going all the way through the channel that I just created with the top stitching. I think the drawstring looks so cute, so I just tied it in a bow here and then trimmed it to the length that I liked. And then to finish off those edges, I just tied them in a knot and trimmed off any excess. So now I can move on to adding the cuffs. This is the last step before the joggers, and this is the exact same process that we used on the sweatshirt. So I'm going to pin these together with the right sides together and sew along the short edge to start. Next, I'm going to fold these in half so that the raw edges are together and the seam is on the inside. And then I can pin these onto the pant legs. With the raw edges together, I'm just going to match up the side seam and the center of each of these pieces. And then I will sew these on, stretching the cuff to fit as I go. And then for one final detail, I'm adding top stitching to the joggers cuffs, just like I did for the sleeves on the sweatshirt. And with that, that is all there is to this project. I'm really pleased with how it came out and it's something that I will be using so much. These are so, so comfortable and I love the color as well. I'm excited to have these in my loungewear wardrobe. And the great thing about the matching set is that it can mix and match with other pieces that I already have. So I'm really excited about that. I know I'll get so much use out of this set. The sweatshirt is one that I would pair with jeans if I wanted to wear it out and about, and I think it's just a really versatile piece. And I even wore the set while I was editing this video, so that's a little bit of video making inception, I guess. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Alright guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this project, even though it was something a little bit different from my usual sewing projects. I will be back with a dress project in my next video, so if that is more your cup of tea, I hope you will enjoy that. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you are new around here, I would love for you to subscribe by clicking the red button down below to stay tuned for my future videos. And if you enjoyed this video and wanted to leave it a like, I would really, really appreciate it. But thank you guys again so much for hanging out here today, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.